Urban Therapy with Sun Sun 752, and this is your daily go get em ism number 692 for August 25th, 2016. Tonight, I want to talk to y'all about being house poor and car broke. House poor! You know what I'm talking about? When you're house poor, that means that you have purchased a house that you really can't afford, or it's a house that you really can't afford. But you've done some things to the house, spending money on the house to make renovations and, um, and, and designing things, furnishing it, and you know, basically putting a lot of time and money into the home that's really taken away from your bottom line. You may have been prepared to buy the home, but you may not have been ready to add on a deck or add on a new room or to reconstruct the 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 uh the property around the house like the yard or the the land surrounding the house or the in-ground pool that you had installed or reinstalled redesigned whatever you know uh when you move from an apartment into a house it's an exhilarating feeling because you feel like I finally took the plunge to get my own home. I'm going to have a place that I can leave to my my children if, if I have some. And it's just a good look, man, you know. Like, no landlord can threaten you with eviction as long as you make your your mortgage payments on time. Or if, or if you were really blessed to be able to buy your home outright. You figure you're going to live for free and clear, you're going to be all right. Of course, you have to take other things into consideration, like the taxes. And if you live in a in a in an affluent neighborhood, that means that your property taxes are going, are going to be pretty high. So that's like that's like paying that's like paying. Um, it can be as much as a car note for some places. And well, we'll get into the car thing in a minute, but yeah, so. You never really own anything out outright in this world. Anything worth anything, you never really own it. Except jewelry. You buy jewelry, that's it. You can insure it, but forget about that. When you are talking about a home, you also have to put, pay homeowners insurance. And if you live in an, a, in an affluent area where the property values are high and you live in a... In a uh, a very um, you know valuable home then your homeowner's insurance is also going to be considerably higher than other places so there are a lot of things that can take away from your bottom line so when you move in into a home from I mean to a house from an apartment you know you think it like yo this is gonna be nice my kids will have their own room even the dogs and the, my pets and everything they'll have a place to to roam around, it's, it, you know, we, we're on our way up, we're doing things. This is my home, I'm gonna make it into a show place, I'm gonna make it into a real home. And it's, and it's a beautiful thing, it really is, it's a great thing to do. But you can become house poor. And house poor is when you put so much money into your house that you're so busy taking care of things with the house that you don't have money for other things. So you better make that house a, a place that you would like to go all the time because you may find yourself in a place where you don't, where you, you're not able to do anything else. So maybe if your house, if your mortgage is very high, and you know your taxes are very high, your insurance is very high, and uh, and anything else that comes with it, along with the other bills that you have to pay in the home, you know the utility bills and, and things like that high in the winter time, high heat in, 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 the, in the winter time, air conditioning in the summer. Hey, there's a difference between being able to buy something and being able to really afford something. Now, afford something, being able to afford something means that you can pay for it, pay for something. But what it really means in the, in the deeper meaning of things, it means that you not only can pay for something but that 
you have enough money left over to be able to do the things that you want to do, that you need to do, that you like to do. So if you find yourself house poor, that means you can't go, you know, turn it up every Friday night like you used to be able to. You can't hit the mall and, and, and just go crazy like you used to be able to do. You know, buy a pair, a pair of shoes every week, Jordans every week, sneakers, whatever, you know, trinkets, electronics, little little toys, toys, you know, uh, high-end cell phones, tablets, you know, little gadgets and stuff. You might find yourself in a position... It, find yourself in a position where you're not able to do those things as freely as you were able to do them before. And you ain't going to like it. You ain't going to like that. Who would? You still want to live the way you used to live. Getting this money. And the kids can be affected. Because you might have bought the house and you may have your kids in private school or something like that. Tuition kicking your ass. Where tuition might have been piece of cake for you before, now it's a little tough. You're a little bit strapped. House poor, baby. House poor. That's the term for it. You know? You have money to be in the house, but you ain't got no money left. You're hurting. It happens to a lot of people. But one of the ways that you can protect yourself against being high poor, a house poor is not to buy things that cost more than you can afford. Don't live beyond your means. Some people, some people say that they that they buy things that are very expensive that they have to pay on because it gives them the motivation to get up off their ass and work. That's really stupid. I, you know, I, I hear people say that kind of thing, and I'm thinking to myself, like, do you realize that if something happens to you? That because you're strapped up to the uh, up to the neck in, in bills and finances, if you should have to go out for a little while, you know, work in corporate, you know, you can take FMLA or something like that, go out on disability. But if you work for yourself, that's it. That's your ass. So now, you know, listen, you can wind up being not only house poor, but, but, um, and foreclosure. You don't want that. So don't live beyond your means. Make sure that whatever you buy, you have enough money left over to play with. It's a it's an easy rule. You know, not saying being stingy, be stingy to yourself, but be smart to yourself. Give yourself a chance to live. If you don't have money, if you if, if you are strapped to the point where you don't where well where you're not able to save money. Then that should be an indication that you spend it, you spent too much. Fall back, make some adjustments, pay something off, get something cheaper. Now with the car broke, we all know somebody that's car broke. Always put money in the car. Bought a car that they really can't afford. They make fifty grand a year. They got a car that's seventy five grand a year. I mean, well, that cost seventy five grand. Now, you know we've seen people do it. People do it all the time. But it's not smart. Hey, you know, if you're a young person, you probably want to put some wing, some, some, some rims on that shit. Candy paint. Tricked out booming system. That's kind of played out, but not to everybody. 22-inch rims. No, 22. 24s. No. Um, Cats me want to do this kind of stuff. A lot of stuff is played out on the, on the whole. But some people still do it. And if you're of that mentality, you know, where the ride is everything to you. That's, that's how you get the girls. That's how you get your respect around the way. That's how all your friends, they look at you because you get do with that ride. You can find yourself in a position where your car broke. So, you barely have money for gas to put in the car. You go to the club, you nursing one drink all night because you broke. Prepare for this ride. But you got the ride that you want. That's what people be saying. Well, at least I got what I wanted. And if I'm going to be strapped like that, then at least I got what I wanted. 
Did you want to be car broke? Did you want to be nursing one drink all night when you used to be going up in the club, turning up, popping bottles and shit? First you was getting bottle service. Now you nursing a drink. One drink. A shot. How you gonna, how you gonna nurse a shot all night? Everybody else done dumped it. You like, holy shit, shit, I don't drink fast like that. My uncle told me to sip. <laughs> your car broke, man. Your car broke. No, your, your, your car ain't broke. You broke over your car. Your car broke. And house poor. And you can be house poor and car broke at the same goddamn time, baby. You know you can. That ain't cool. That ain't cool. So, it's one of them things, man. It is. It's one of those things. And, um, you know, but if you if you live within your means, if you control your eyes and don't let them get bigger than your, your wallet or your bank account, you'll be all right. Other than that, ride out that 72-month lease. I mean, 72-month um, um, car new. They got 72-month car new. I can't take it. They got 84-month car new. Take you seven years to pay off a vehicle. Stop playing. They'll get you in a ride. Good things happen to those who wait. Great things happen to those who grind. And anything can happen to those who go for theirs. So go hard, go for yours. And remember, man, you don't want to be house broke. I mean, house poor. You don't want to be car broke. And you can you can eliminate yourself from being both of those things by just making sure that you don't live beyond your means. Control your eyes. Don't let your eyes be bigger than your wallet, and your bank account. Control yourself. Self-control is always a beautiful thing. It's something that always benefits you. Always, every single time, self-control helps you. It never lets you down. How can you let, be let down by controlling yourself? Taking more control. The Urban Therapy was signed. Summer Burn event is this Saturday, August 27th, 10 a.m. Rittenhouse Street, Wissickin Avenue. Y'all know how we do. We're going back out in the woods. It's going to be the bomb. If y'all want to come through, come on through. Let's have some fun. Once again, just like we always do around this time, baby. I'll holler at y'all later. Later, y'all be good. Real good, you know what I'm saying? Peace.